Welcome back to Prince JM2, aka Prince I Came to Dream. If you came back to one of my videos or streams, that must mean you are a fiend. Now we are back with Fright Night Friday. Yes, where every Friday, and guess what? I'm recording it on a Friday, and I might even post it on a Friday, so I don't need to hold for laughs. Hopefully, I get this done. If I do, I'm feeling like the shit. If I don't, well, hey. You know what type of video, <laughs> you know who you're watching. Let's just say that. <laughs> but, um, yeah. Well, every Friday we get together and we watch scary videos that y'all sent in. Now, I will say this. This week, y'all mm, sent in nothing. This is like three weeks in a row, guys. Honestly, I'm just disappointed in you. Like, I, I thought, like, the first one was just like a ha-ha. Second one was like, okay, we're mad at you. Three, though, you just hate me. And if that's okay. And if you're saying I'm victim blaming or I'm being a victim, I am. <laughs> um, but let's go ahead and get into it. Okay, our first video is brought to us by MJV Animations. Now, listen, I usually... I, I did a video like this a long time ago when Fright Night Friday first came out and I got a copyright strike. Oh, no, boo. Yeah, he was a lame ass person to give me that. I'm be honest with you. To this day, it's really F him. <laughs> and technically, it was my fault because he does have it in his description. I will be honest, and that's on me. But once I sent him an email, he didn't respond. And I'm like, bro, really gonna give a copyright strike? Like, it's, to me, I think it's lame because you can always just genuinely just give a copyright, you know what I'm saying? You can just give a copyright and get the money from it. You don't have to give a person a strike, so I think that's lame. Um, but, you know, do what you want to do. Um, not going to say who it was, but, uh, yeah, so I really try to stay away from videos like this, but we are back, you know what I'm saying? And I wanted to see uh, if we could watch one together, you know what I'm saying? Like, because I actually do like the videos. They be nice. They be a little nice, you know what I'm saying? Um... And they'd be like, based on true stories, or supposedly, you know, maybe somebody just lying, typing on their computer. Lies, 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 lies. Um, but that's okay. Um, it's called 30 True Animated Horror Stories. Uh, yeah. Um, we're going to watch one. Because it's like two hours, and I'm like, you think I'm about to, like, come on. You know who I am. You know. <laughs> Let's go. Oh, you thought I forgot I did not. Uh today we're drinking a frappe. Yes. Um French vanilla. Um I said French vanilla, vanilla bean. Um with a little bit of cinnamon. Mm -hmm. Uh with a shot of caffeine. <laughs> um I'm sorry about that. I'm sorry about that. I'm sorry about that. I genuinely am on one. I think it's because of the caffeine. Uh, or maybe it's just because I have PD. All right, let's go. <laughs> Hotel alone. I was on a road trip for work, driving on a long highway to my next hotel. It was just some cheap hotel in a town I'd never heard of, but was right off the highway from my route. I drove on this empty road for hours, only seeing another car or two every once in a while, until at some point I saw a car's headlights coming up behind me. For the next three hours that I drove, this car stayed behind me on this massive empty highway. When I reached the exit for the hotel, I pulled off and parked in the lot. A few seconds later, the car behind me did the same, parking on the other side of the hotel's parking lot. It was a really big coincidence for them to have been behind me for three hours and have the same destination as me, but I tried to not overcomplicate it and considered it some strange luck. On the outside, this hotel was not very attractive. It was old and small, and it was the only building off the highway. No other restaurants or houses or anything. I was under the impression when I booked it that it was in a town, but I guess I was wrong. I got out and grabbed my bag, 
then went up to the front desk inside the building. The woman at the front desk checked me in, giving me a key card to my room. For how old the place looked, both inside and out, you were surprised I, have I was a key card. surprised they even had key card doors. Me too. Okay, I was saying the same locks. thing. I walked down to the end of the hallway on the first floor, going up to my room and scanning the card multiple times before it finally worked. It was old fashioned and very small, but it looked clean and taken care of, which was all I was concerned about. I set everything down and started unpacking what I needed for the night, and just moments later, there was a knock on my door. I looked out the peephole and saw a man standing in the hallway. I'd never seen him before, and he didn't look like he worked for the hotel. I chose to ignore him and not answer the door. I don't know, it just felt like the safer option, considering the empty hotel right next to the empty highway. Whatever he wanted couldn't have been important anyways, because he didn't knock again after that. I finished up what I was doing and showered, then got in bed. I turned on the TV and watched one of the random free movies they had, then fell asleep sometime around 12 or 1am. When I woke up, the room was completely dark and I was extremely tired. In the back of my head, I was hearing this beeping sound, ringing over and over as I was in between being awake and asleep. All of a sudden, my eyes widened and I snapped fully awake just as I understood what the sound was. I jumped out of bed and flicked on the lamp. The beeping stopped and was followed by footsteps sprinting down the hallway. I ran over to the door and swung it open, looking down the hall, but I must have- So you opened the door, it. you did what they needed you to do? A few seconds later, the woman from the front desk showed up at the end of the hallway, looking nervously down at me. I asked her if she saw anyone running, and she nodded, saying a man just ran out into the parking lot. I looked out and saw a man getting into a car, the same one that was behind me on the highway. He backed out and drove away squeaking his tires from leaving so fast and dangerously entering back onto the highway. I asked the woman for more details and she said he had just walked in a few minutes ago and went right down the hall, so she assumed he had a room already. Then a minute later she saw him sprinting out. I told her that I woke up to the sound of a key card trying to unlock my door. Knowing my key card took a few tries to work, it made me terrified to think that he may have somehow had the right one and could have been a couple more attempts from entering. The fact that he even had a keycard was terrifying. To keep things short, police weren't too helpful and the man was never found. I did some research on my own though and found some people talking about fake universal keycards that can work with some random hotel doors, which was unsettling to know about. I don't know what that man was trying to do, or exactly how everything happened that night, but I won't be staying at any more hotels for a long time. So first off, let's go ahead and start here. Uh, first things first. Why didn't he kill the lady at the front desk? No offense, you know what I'm saying? You already there. You already a victim. You're a victim. <laughs> Um, but that's one. Secondly, uh, why would you open the door? That didn't make no sense. That was dumb. Thirdly, I don't know, bro. I, I y'all need to have that thing going, cause I promise you, I promise you. He would have been walking out with two holes, at least two, maybe five. Mine's come with 20. <laughs> so you know what I'm doing. You know what I'm on the moment. Boop, boop, boop. Y'all ever seen uh, the mask? Boy, going to be leaking. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> oh, shit. 
So our next video is brought to us by Markiplier. You know, the guy that plays video games and uh, does the little weird thing with his voice. Yeah, him. Um, it's called <laughs> The Edge of Sleep. I don't know why, like, my voice just got straight in tone and I look like a serial killer. I'm really just a chill guy. Uh, <laughs> but no, um, yeah. Let's get into it. I, I, it's, it's just a trailer, so, you know, let's watch it. When did the nightmares begin? When he was born. I brought him home from the hospital, and he just cried and cried, and he just never slept through the night. Damn. Dave. Starting to hallucinate. I go to sleep. Have you ever heard of something like this? Sleep. A virus that kills you in your sleep. Damn. No. How long can someone stay awake for? It varies from person to person. Several days, maybe. You still don't want to stay up past 48 hours. You start seeing things, you start hearing things. Paranoia, depression, psychosis. Horrible thoughts circling in your head. So what, we're just supposed to stay awake forever? When I, I need answers and I need them now. Brains are shut down. I don't have any answers. What the fuck is that, man? Awake. You got something to do with it? Oh, Open the door! Be awake. We've had kids, healthy people drop dead for no reason. You think that's normal? I'm talking to you, David boy. Better stay away. I'm sorry. Stay away. Stay alive. Sleep. Damn, that just straight. Okay, we might have to watch that. We might have to have a little watch party. Okay, then. Okay, then. I ain't gonna lie. That's torture. Like, if, if you ever had to, like, stay up, like, you really do. It really starts to become, like, like painful like it's really make you distorted and stuff like that like i don't wish that on my worst enemy um that's a lie i wish the worst for my worst enemy. <laughs> um but with that being said though uh how long do y'all think y'all can stay up what's the latest y'all stayed up i think the latest i've ever stayed up was like um what was it what was it uh i think i stayed up like I passed 24 hours for sure. I, I, I think I went to like the 36 mark before. 36 before. I'll be honest. Probably something like that. Um, yeah. Our next video is brought to us by Santiago. It's called Milk. If y'all just knew how long I've been going through videos. I'm going to tell you right now, it's almost an hour. Think about that. From the first video to now. I'm tired. Nope. 
missing is crazy. Drinking milk is even crazier now that I thought to think about it. She's smoking a cigarette. That's Mom. even crazier. Use a glass. Don't drink out of the carton. I didn't see you. So if I wasn't here, you drink out of the carton? Were you just outside? Go to bed, please. Damn, she tired of your shit, bruh. If you don't go upstairs. Hey, y'all, I'm, 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 I'm scared. I'm scared. I'm scared. I'm scared. I'm scared. I'm scared. Um, how did you... Daniel? Is that you? Daniel, are you in the kitchen? I don't, I don't know what to do. Stop. Stop it. Please. I said, come here. I'm sorry. Don't go. Pause right now. Which one do y'all think is the real one? Which one do y'all think is the real one? Which one do y'all think is the real one? I don't know. I don't know. I'm scared. I'm terrified. Because at this point, if I go, I can die. If I stay, I can die. I'm running to my room. <laughs> I'm so scared. Ha, 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 ha. 
<laughs> Come here. <laughs> I said, come here. <laughs> Why do I have to tell you over and over again? Come here. That motherfucker was good. That was that was great. That was great. I was scared. I was terrified. I did not know what to do. I I still don't know what to do. I'm kind of confused. I want to cry. I want to call my mama, but I don't know if it's her no more. They ask you how you are. You just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine. Or you just can't get into. Our next video is brought to us by Broccoli Animations. Yes, it's called Eight True Fighting Horror Stories Animated. I, I'm sorry, but we're only watching one and it's called Ring Camera. I got a ring camera. You, 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 you definitely use that motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? You try to see who be knocking at your door and stuff like that. Uh, but I, I still act like I'm not home. But you know, it is what it is. Let's go ahead and get into it. My wife Janice and I moved into a beautiful new house. It was in an isolated neighborhood just outside of town and we both loved it. The place was so much bigger than our little apartment in the city and we got a great deal from its previous owner, Bruce, who had been facing foreclosure. Damn. Unfortunately, I didn't get to spend a lot of time at home. I had a pretty heavy workload and with the added commute time, I really struggled to maintain a balance. I told myself that after a few weeks, things would settle down. Well, this settle down time lasted for over two months, and I was still barely seeing my wife. Then, one weekend, I finally had the chance to relax. I went around the house looking for any easy repairs that I could do. It was an old place, but Bruce had kept it in pretty good shape. I was checking out the porch lights when I noticed a piece of technology that I wasn't expecting. Our front door had a ring camera, and judging by the little shining light, it was still active. This couldn't have been an oversight, because we'd already been here for months, and I was pretty sure people had to pay a monthly fee to keep ring cameras connected. 
Well, that could only mean that Bruce still had access to the camera. Every time we walked in and out of the house, he could see us. The thought unnerved me. I barely knew the man, but we hadn't left things on the best terms. He really didn't want to sell his house, and he wasn't happy with the final amount we agreed on. It took me a while to build up the courage, but I eventually called him on the phone. He didn't answer. I thought about calling the police, but that felt like an overreaction. After all, it could have been just an innocent mistake. I know a lot of people automatically pay for subscriptions without checking. That could very easily be the case here. But for a man who was so desperate for money, that didn't seem likely. I went to Janice to ask okay. for advice, but she also assured me that it wasn't a big deal. If it really upset me, then we could just pay someone to rip the camera out of the door. I knew that Janice was right. I was overreacting. But I still felt paranoid. I was more aware of my surroundings. As if I expected to spot Bruce sneaking around the yard or something. But in this more aware state, I noticed that some of our valuables had gone missing. A vase, my grandmother's earrings, some vintage books. I didn't know how that connected to the ring camera, but it felt like there was something weird going on. A vase went Just missing in case, and you didn't think- I logged into my banking website and saw that a very large sum of money was recently taken from one of our savings accounts. I decided not to tell Janice yet. I needed to get more information first. On Sunday, the banks weren't open, so I waited until Monday. I didn't tell Janice that I'd call in sick, so she thought I was still in the office. You thought Instead, she was keen, I went to our bank and talked with a cashier. She checked their records and saw that Janice had withdrawn the funds herself. I didn't believe her, so she had to call a manager in. I made such a fuss that he pulled me into the back room and showed me the security tapes of Janice withdrawing the money. Absolutely Damn. furious, I rushed back home. I was about to charge through the door when I stopped myself. I could hear voices coming from the living room. Through the window, I could see Janice lying on the floor. She was tied up and gagged. A man I had never met before was kneeling next to her, licking her feet. I couldn't let this go on any longer. I ran inside. Janice gasped when she saw me, but the noise was muffled by her gag. The man just froze in place, looking surprised, but not embarrassed. Behind him, there were a dozen sets of high heels on the table, plus some stockings and a long feather. What the hell? I screamed. The man slowly stood up. Because Janice couldn't explain, he had to. He said that they'd met on Reddit and had been having an affair for weeks. Damn. He said that she was tired of being alone all the time, that I'd abandoned her for work, and that I couldn't satisfy her the way he could. By then, Janice had spat out her ball gag. She added, and that creeper Bruce caught us on video. He's been blackmailing me. Now it all made sense. Not only was my wife a cheater and a freak, but she also stole from me to cover up her. Not <laughs> <laughs> only was she a cheater, she was a freak. <laughs> he hated it. She getting her duty beat down. I said that was crazy, right? I kind of called it. Yup affair this marriage was over all i had to do was kick them both out of the house and call my lawyer but no matter what i said the man refused to leave i'm a businessman so i can talk very sternly but i've never had to use physical violence before it was clear that no matter what i said he wasn't afraid of me after telling him to get out for probably the fifth time he smiled and walked over to the table then he grabbed a stocking and stretched it tight between his hands. He stepped closer. The what hell? are you doing? I love her, was all he said. He jumped on me and wrapped the stocking around my neck. I struggled to shake him off me, but he refused to let go. He squeezed tighter and tighter. I couldn't breathe. Janice remained sitting on the ground. 
At any point, she could have said something to stop her lover, but she didn't. She just watched. Everything was going dark. I didn't have much time left. And then, the front door slammed open and two policemen charged in. One grabbed the man and cuffed him, while the other helped untie Janice. I gave my statement, making sure to leave in every embarrassing detail. I expected them to take the man away in cuffs, but I didn't expect them to take Janice, too. I watched everyone leave, making sure to thank the cops. Once they were all gone, I noticed one more person standing just outside my porch. Earth. It was Bruce. He sheepishly walked over and apologized for blackmailing Janice. He said it was the biggest regret of his life. I was about to really lay into him when he added that he was the one who called the police. He'd watched me interrupt my wife's foot play, and when he didn't see anyone leave, he expected the worst and called 911. In the end, I forgave him. He still won't give back the money, though. I'm not even gonna count. That John is terrifying, bro. Your wife getting broken into. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah, look, he was going to tell. He said, "I'm a kill for her." <laughs> That's my. <laughs> That's tough. Our final video is brought to us by TJR Films. It is called the Sydney Barber Tapes. Oh shit, there's a little found footage in them motherfuckers. Found footage in them motherfuckers. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, I think this is the coffee. Let's go. <laughs> On October 2nd, 2008, 19 year old Sydney Barber and Urban Explorer disappeared while investigating the Benton Research Facility in America Country, Arizona. The area was searched by several different government agencies. Oh shit. 15 years later, the footage from Sydney camcorder on the night she disappeared was leaked to the public by an unknown source. The following strings of recordings have since became known as the Sydney Barber tapes. Oh shit. Okay, Sydney, what's going on, Sydney? Camera on, light on. Here we go. Fuck that. A moment, you saying F that, but you still going in.
each other stop the incident in 24. I, I was in my office finishing up charts for the day. I, I heard screaming. I ran out and Dr. Reynolds, oh Jesus. Where was Dr. Reynolds? He was, he was everywhere. On the ceiling, on the floor, the walls. Where was asset 0235? Yo, she a bad actor. I ain't gonna cap. That was a good actor. The dude down the person who said put the gun down, that was good. Why she started running? Oh shit. I never understand why people keep recording. The only time I'm recording is to record me say something. Like, mama, I love you. Mama, I love you. Hit them jets, hit them jets, hit them jets.
Boom. Oh shit. Wait, is her foot out there but her hand there? Go ahead and get this giant, uh, mm, 7.898. Yeah, I was gonna give it an eight just because of the milk giant. I really wanted to give it a 10 because of that giant, but these other giants, you know, they, they were cool, they were straight. I mean, it did scare me at the end, so I'd be nice. Uh, I'm, I'm not gonna lie to y'all, my favorite giant's the milk. Milk giant by far, you know what I'm saying? That giant, that giant had me, whew. The other giant with the wife giant was kind of funny though. Seeing your wife getting busted into is crazy work. Uh, but y'all tell me what was y'all favorite videos and what y'all give it. But like always, don't sleep on your boy like a sedative. Don't miss the come up from zero to a million. And life's only as big as we make it. And we're going to make that shit amazing. I'm out. Peace.